we can't turn the ball over. We have to play air-free football, and uh, we would certainly hope that maybe they would help us out a little bit like Denison did with some turnovers, and, and I know we had some great plays, but in order for that to happen, you got to have a pretty good pass rush and uh, and forcing a fumble. We, I think they had four fumbles in there, and we got one of them. So those are things that uh, we have to hope will happen to Harlan, and we hope that we can play air-free football. and. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. But we do know our defense has got to play extremely well because we're not going to score a lot of points. Joe uh, Harlan with a 55-11 and 11 playoff record. Uh, they're 276 and 36 since 1972. That's the first year of the playoffs, and Harlan did win a state title back in 72. They've won eight. Uh, that's 87% wins for 27, 28 seasons. Uh, you don't even make that up, do you? Well, the interesting thing is, how do they do it? And it, it's, it has to be starting in the lower grades where they build tradition, and then they just go forward from that because obviously over time, they've not had the world's greatest athletes, although they've obviously had some good ones, but it's not, and they haven't been blessed with Division One or Division Two prospects. It just tells you that there's a program in place down there that knows how to develop young players, get them involved in the program, get them playing as a team and then they just bring them up through the ranks and uh, it it's got to be the the finest overall football program in the state of Iowa I mean they, you can talk about Emmitsburg and it's close in the same breath but I think I got to take Harlan right now well they have eight state titles nobody else has more than five and so that speaks for itself and, and Bill is a, we're taping this during the day on Monday it is a little bit breezy it's very warm uh, it might even be a, a light jacket or even a shirt sleeve crowd uh, tonight at Harlan. What about if it is uh, breezy, what effect might that have? Well, I don't think it'll have a great effect on uh, either team because neither team throws as much as they run the football. But, uh, you know, it always plays a, f a factor uh, sometimes in whether you want to kick or receive and and uh, whether you have the wind behind you in the fourth quarter or not. So there's always going to be those type of decisions that you have to make. But uh, we were just talking today how this is about as opposite as you could get from the last time that we went uh, up to the quarterfinal round in South Dakota. And I think there was the ground was covered with ice and snow and, and about 30 degrees or less. So and now today, just a beautiful day. Yeah, that was uh, almost eight years to the day in 1991 that uh, Coach Kibbe is referring to. Well, a very exciting time. We hope we have a very exciting game film to show you. And, and let's take a look at the JSPC Harlan State Playoff Quarterfinal Round first half game film. From Merrill Field in Harlan, the Rams have won the toss. They'll take the football first and go into a southerly breeze of about uh, 15 miles an hour or so. The Cyclones come in at 10 and all, the Rams 7 and 3. We look at the JSPC offense first with Tyler Caius and Jonathan Minahan back deep. Minahan has got to be one of the top uh, returners average wise in the state. 49.7 yards and seven returns, two touchdowns, including one against the Monarchs. Kicking off for the Cyclones, Courtney Berry. Split in, Reed Kinney at the tight end, and Harlan will squib the kick, and it's loose and will go out of bounds at about the 16-yard line, so a flag, and probably the Rams will take it at their 35. Matt Lautner is the Ram fullback. Matt Fye, Scott Erickson the half. <laughs> tight end left, split backs behind Briggs. The Rams will give it to Lautner, and he'll lose yardage. About a two-yard loss. Kyle Murtaugh, the safety. So a two-yard loss, second down and 12. From the 33, and the Rams will lose some more yardage. Harlan all over the Ram running game in the first. And Matt Fye in the slot left, split backs. Reed Kinney tight end to the right side. And Briggs wants to throw, gets by the first man, stops, throws over the middle, complete short of a first down, hit down at the 40-yard line. The uh, fullback, Lautner, and it'll be fourth down. And Along with Cameron Kirsch. Good snap. Dominic gets it away under a fairly heavy rush, taking it to 33. And bending backwards is the return man for Harlan, Murtaugh. At about the 29, pretty good coverage there, Joe Gitch. Awfully good coverage. Uh, uh, Harlan uh, was trying to set up the wall. Harlan out of the eye set to begin the ball game from their 29, and they want to throw right off the bat. Gallinger, a pass incomplete, led Martin too much. The ball hit the ground at the line of scrimmage. Second field. 
Out of the eye set, they'll pitch it to Martin. Now a reverse play back to the near side to Leinen. And he gets by a couple of uh, Rams. will be close to the first down, driven out of bounds below us on the Harlan sideline. Back, 32-yard uh, average per punt is the punter. Dustin Briggs, the Ram quarterback, the return man at his 22. Low snap, but very little pressure. Great kick with a win. Briggs takes it at his 22. Near sideline, 30, out of bounds at about the 32. So Dustin with about a 10-yard return, pretty good field position for Jide left. And the senior Aaron Robbins is in the slot left, split backs. And the Rams will try to throw on first down. Briggs under pressure, he'll go down. Big loss in the play, back to about the 24-yard line. And the defensive went in slot to the left side again for the Rams, who have done nothing but go backwards so far, give up the middle, and very little there for Matt Lautner. Spins forward. Uh, yeah, they, they, their defensive backs are so well-schooled, Doug, in, in, uh, in defensive coverage. Rams will keep it on the ground to Matt Fye. He'll get a little bit to the 32. It'll be a punting situation. The offensive line, Doug, they have been dominating the defensive lines of the opponents. So far, the battle of the trenches has been won by the Harlan Cyclones. Robin gets the punt away, fair catch called for, now it bounces, a ram bounce to the 40, 35, and 33 yard line is where Harlan has it. First down and 10, a scoreless ball game on Real Country, and our niece and Martin in a nice set, they'll give it to Jamie Martin, draw play, and not much there. Nice defensive job by the inside linebacker, Matt Lautner. Todd Walker, the corner, helps out. Joe, what, maybe one? Power eye look at second and nine. Gallery gives it to Martin. He's got running room and a first down and into the Ram territory at the 46-yard line. Boy, that hole was there. Now wing wide to the left side, an offset eye. And they'll give it on the draw play to the fullback, McNeese. He won't go anywhere. All kinds of white jerseys around that ball. And uh, I believe the first man to get the uh, hand on him there was the defensive split left under the eye set. Uh, Brett Gallinger to draw a play to Martin. And a little bit of running room to about the uh, right side. Dominic Linen on third and seven. The Rams showing blitz and a flag flies prior to the snap. First penalty flag of the night. It comes with 5-12 to play in the opening period. Double wing to the right side, split left. Gallinger looking to throw, now being rushed, and it'll be sacked. Scott Schwaller, Joe, the big junior defensive tackle on the set. Long snap count, both teams finding the moving uh, difficult. High punt, Briggs at his 18 takes it, far side, and is hit by the first man, 25-30, and dumped out of bounds, just short of the 30. Boy, Dustin did a great job again. Rams this year. Third possession, no score. We've played uh, about eight minutes. Rams will keep it on the ground and fall down, in fact. So, uh, far side of the field, that's the short side of the field. And the Rams will lock it up the middle. Matt Lautner is running over. Matt Lautner at the 50. Matt Lautner pulled down at the 48-yard line by the free safety Kyle Murtaugh. Excellent fake. I bought the fake. Knew where he was going from the Cyclone defense until he was 15 yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Erickson is the wing right side. The Rams keep it on the ground and Lautner won't get much there. Two yards to the 47. Blew some continuity to it. Split right is Minahan. Slot right is Erickson. The Rams will run option left. They pitch it late to five and he's got about five and really is hit down hard. Third and about three or two tight end set and the Wishbone for the Rams. Briggs wants to throw. He does, and it's knocked up in the air, incomplete off the hands of Reed Kinney. Very shit. They're so well disciplined in school. They didn't bite on the play action fate, and the linebackers were there to have their hands up. Avendick to punt into the win at about the 12 or 11. Murtaugh takes it, comes in the near side, gets by one man. He's out of hole. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and Scott Schwaller at midfield brings down. A very good uh, returner, Kyle Murtaugh, near it. Power eye set for the Cyclones. He'll keep it on the ground on first down. And breaking tackles is Lyon. He's to the 40. And with the two tight ends set. And power eye look. And Jamie Martin gets the carry in the first down. He'll be at the 35 of JSPC. Before being uh, brought by Murtaugh. Stay with the same set. And this time a little counter action to line him. The other side, he's got himself a first down. And then some, does he stay in bounds? No, on the near sideline out at the 23. 
as uh, contain and uh, line very, very close to breaking that for the distance. First down, and we give to the fullback, nothing doing. Lautner and Erickson, the two inside linebackers, throwing the reserve fullback, Jeff Hester. Wing right, split left. Gallinger pitched to Martin. Martin's got some running room. He's got the 20, and 15 keeps driving near the first down sticks and has the first down. Pretty close to the Ram 10 yard line before Courtney Berry off into the first quarter. No score, Cyclones on the move. JSBC zero, Harlan zero. Now this from the Real Country Championship Club. Some of our fine. And, uh, uh, that means that your corners and your defensive ends are gonna have to box in to force everything up inside. First play of the second period goes to Martin inside the 10 to the nine and then flung back by Matt Lautner and Todd Walker. So it'll be a gain of one. Going, uh, this offense to get wide. Second down and uh, eight. Pitch to Linen on the left side. Rams played it well. Zach Fox straightens him down at the 15. What a play, Joe, by Fox and his third and long. That was an outstanding defensive play by Zach. Tight end, 6'2", 200, the leading receiver in terms of uh, catches. Rams show blitz again. Gallagher rolling right, being rushed. And he is in the grasp and will go down. Luke Ball led the charge formation. Fourth and 30. 10 minutes to go in the half, scoreless. Rams are kind of leery of whether it's a punt or not. Gallagher will punt it, and he tries to angle it for the near sideline oh. into the end zone. A nice try on that coffin corner, but it did catch, as we see it, the uh, inside right-hand corner side. I set for Dustin Briggs. Rams haven't been able to do much offensively. There's Matt Fido for a first down to the 32. Off the right side before being brought down by Murtaugh, the free safety. That's the big defensive line. By his wing right now, Erickson and Lautner in the Ram backfield. And they want to run left with Scott Erickson. He's got the 40 yard line still driving and Harlan tries to strip the ball. I think the Rams still have it at a first down. Right, first and 10 for the Rams at their 43 with 8.58 to go in the half. Keep it on the ground to Fye and maybe one yard, maybe not. Lots of red jerseys around the situation uh, Knight is Fye, Lautner is the fullback, and they will pitch it to Fye, trying to get around the corner far side, can't do it. Back to the line of scrimmage, eight eight for no gain on Aaron Robbins, play. wing right, Minahan split left from the eye, third and a long ten. Riggs rolling left, he's got time, he goes deep over the middle, he's got a man and over, shoots Robbins at the 35, Robbins at the win, Jamie did a good job in the first period, all in the 35 to 37 yard range, here comes the rush, he gets it away, angling to the far side, it hits at the 30, and out of bounds in Harlan territory at the 29 yard line, so a 28 yard punt. Split back to the left side, I formation. I'll give it to Martin, Bumble. drops a football, and Jamie Martin back on it just ahead of Luke Ball. The high set for Gallinger and what probably is a throwing situation. They do look to the near side, complete to Linen. He breaks a tackle, drops yeah. a football, who's got it? I think the Rams do, do they stay in bounds? Yes, yes. the Rams have it. Force the turnover. 6.38 to go, first period in Harlan territory now. Rams will run and uh, not run very successfully actually a couple of yards up the middle from the 37 to maybe the 35 for Matt Lautner second down and midway through the first uh, second quarter rather on the ground trying to get a little bit of room there uh, Erickson side and Robbins wing right Harlan doing some defensive shifting Briggs wants to throw he's got time in the traffic and it it's is caught a flag down Two flags down, in fact. Let's see the call. The caught right, Barry wide right, split backs. Briggs will give it to Erickson right up the middle, and he gets very little in the way of yardage. Uh, maybe two yards to the nose to nose football from those 15, players. 15, second and long. Briggs running option left. Cuts it up. Briggs spins, gets hit, goes down to about the 11, almost lost the ball. Wasn't that a great tackle by number two, Kyle? And Lautner, or quarterback Dustin Briggs. And they run uh, to the right, Briggs wants to throw, being chased, now he'll run, he's at the 10. Big hit, close to the first down sticks and pushed back. I think he might right, they need two yards. Briggs gives, oh he keeps it. Briggs option, Briggs first down at the five. First and goal, JSPC, Dustin running option left. And uh, did the nice, uh, the power eye set, new set of downs, first and goal. Give to Erickson up the middle, Erickson to the goal line, Erickson touchdown! touchdown. 
JSBC leads 6 0 with 2.53 to go in quarter number two. And the home crowd where we're sitting from Harlan pretty stunned as the underdog Rams have the lead, Joe. Well, Doug, here we go again. Chin out of that uh, full house eye, and uh, Scott Erickson just bowled into the end zone for the touchdown and the lead for the Rams. Jamie Dominic will try to kick the PAT, and it is wide left. No good. No good. Well, the Rams can't convert on the extra point kick, but they do have the lead. Six to nothing, 2.53 to go in the half. Now this from the real Minan, 2.53 to go in the half. The Rams have the lead on a 37-yard eight-play drive following the fumble recovery by Scott Erickson. Bouncing kick taken at about the 17-yard line by Murtaugh up to the 25 and 30, 35-yard line before Kyle Murtaugh goes down. And the Cyclones have uh, plenty of time and pretty decent field position. Matt Smith, one of those down there, along with Lyman on the near side. Rams show blitz, long count. And Lyman, or uh, rather, uh, quarterback Gallagher rolling right. He's going to be hit and sacked inside the 30, about the 26-yard line. Kyle Miller on the left. Cyclones go to shotgun, Doug. Shotgun on second and 18. Gallagher rushed again. Now he's going to tuck it under and run. He's at the 30, 35, and out of bounds near the 40. In fact, uh, up to the 43. Courtney Berry finally got him out. That's a big run. It'll be the quarterback. Clock, third and two. Clock stopped. 144 to go in the half. Now they give to Martin, and no, I don't think he got there. Oh, a very generous oh, spot. Uh, once again, that was a great spot for uh, for the Cyclones, Doug, because uh, he was stood up early. 35 to go in the half. A shotgun again. Gallagher looking, looking, he's got time now, and dumps it off, and incomplete at the 50. Great play by Scott Erickson, uh, coming out of there th from his line, interior line. On the far side, line and wing right. Again, the shotgun, with the slot left, they're gonna snap it to the up man, the short man, and it works well to the 38-yard line for Harlan. Alonzo McNeese, the fullback, got the snap. It'll be first and 10. Jonathan Minahan made the uh, stop. Nicely done there by Harlan. Well-conceived play, Doug. Uh, Linen, or McNeese is lined up in front of the uh, quarterback, just a short snap to him, and the Rams uh, coming hard on the pass rush and uh, picked up uh, 17 yards. Back going again, Harlan without the huddle. Throw the far side, and that is complete to Kirsch. A first down again at the Ram 27. Dug out by Tyler Caius, and Harlan on the move late. Split left. And the direct snap now for Brett Gallinger. He's going to give it to Martin on the draw. And Jamie has some running room. Cuts left and has another first down. Great elusiveness, Doug. And defense. 53 uh, seconds to go in the half. Gallinger, the shotgun, tucks it under to run and is brought down. Ball almost came loose. I think the Cyclones will use a timeout. Spun down there. Rams up 6-0. to zero. Gallinger. From a direct snap position, almost dropped the ball. He wants to throw. He throws toward the end zone. He's got a man. It's a touchdown. Yeah. Oh, he dropped the ball. Line and had it at the goal line, Joe. He had the coverage beaten. Line and had it in his hands and dropped it. I had written down a completion on my uh, sheet. Duck. To what would have been a touchdown pass. His wing on the right side, two tight ends. Direct snap for Brett Gallinger. Now motion to the far side by Dominic Linen. Gallinger looks to throw. He is hit, and he'll go down. Loose ball. Foot, loose ball, uh, Doug. It is a loose ball. Who Rams have it? it. The Rams have the football. All right, the Rams recover. Ball made the hit. See who made the recovery. It is That's Michael, Michael Walker. Walker. Pulled around and ran down Gallinger from behind. Dustin Briggs goes to one knee to run out this clock. Yeah, the Rams don't want to uh, see anything happen except the time run out. Michael Walker recovery. Luke Ball forced it. And uh, Harlan is not going to stop it. And the Rams are going to have a 6 0 halftime lead. Two Cyclone turnovers. One helped the Rams score. The other one prevented the Cyclones from scoring. And the Rams are now at a plus 17 on the turnover ratio. Defending state champion Harlan, zero at halftime for Merrill Field. Now, this for the Real Country Championship Club. Yeah. Doug Reeder and Joe Gitch on our Ram Wrap-Up Playoff Edition, JSPC 6. Harlan Community nothing at the half of the Harlan Pet Band down on the track below us. We're up here on top of the press box at Joe Gitch, a 6 nothing Ram lead. Well, this game is once again shaping up somewhat similar to last week, although it's much more of a defensive struggle. This Ram defense has held up once again. They had the big turnover, the big sack. 
when you thought Harlan was going to go in for the score, Luke Ball has the big sack, takes him out of field goal range. The Rams can take advantage of those uh, of those types of plays. They turn around, capitalize on the turnover, uh, on the fumble recovery, take it in for the six uh, for the six points and the score. Doug, what's shaping up as a typical Ram game that we've seen in the last few weeks? All you want is the opportunity. If you're a Ram fan, all you want to be is have the chance to win going into the fourth quarter through the first half of the football. The Rams are there. If things stay the way they were in the first half, the Rams will be going into this wind, southerly breeze of about, oh, 15 miles an hour or so. And having the lead is going to be imperative uh, if indeed the Rams do go into that win in the last period, Joe. Well, it's it'll come down to, as, once again, a game of field position. And you know this Harlan team's going to come back. I mean, Historically, this is probably the best prepared high school football team week in and week out in the state of Iowa. You know this 6 nothing lead isn't going to stand. It's just going to be a function of how can this Ram defense stand up and can they control the football, run some clock, get some first downs. The only touchdown in the first half, Scott Erickson on a six-yard run. It was set up by a Ram fumble recovery. Michael Walker uh, recovered the fumble as a... Uh, Harlan actually completed a pass play where the Rams went eight yards and 37, uh, 37 yards rather on eight plays. The PAT was wide left. That's why it's six to nothing. Then Harlan got down deep just before the half and Michael Walker recovered a fumble that was caused by Luke Ball when he hit the quarterback. The Rams have really gotten to Gallinger in his first half. They really have excellent pressure. To me, Doug, the key to this game early on, it appeared the offensive line was tentative. They said, my goodness, we're on this field. We're in Harlan, Iowa. Who are we playing? Are these guys supermen or what? And they were tentative. Second quarter, I think we saw this offensive line start gaining confidence that, hey, we can play with these guys. We can knock these guys down. To me, that's been the key so far this game. Now can the Ram offensive line maintain that, uh, that edge, so to speak, throughout the second half? Just looking around, we're up higher here on top of the press box. We can see a big part of the large throng here and beautiful November night and uh, as Guy Richardson our cameraman swings around just take a look at the crowd see if you can find yourself uh, ladies and gentlemen as you're watching this on the Ram wrap-up show tape delay special quarter final uh, playoff round edition we certainly thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to bring you the playoffs on uh, cable television and uh, what a great run it has been JSPC with the six to nothing lead over the Harlan Cyclones, and Joe and I will go back down to the press box and uh, pick it up in the third quarter of action from Merrill Field. To the second half we go. Glad to have you along on Real Country, KGRA FM Jefferson, and the special playoff edition of the Ram Wrap-Up Show. JSPC 6 and uh, Harlan 0. And the Cyclones will get the ball first. Uh, defensive struggle is expected. Coach Kibbe mentioned in the pregame, Joe, if the Rams are going to have a chance to win, it had to be a low-scoring game. And so far, he's got his wish. Doug, it, was, uh, it could have been a little bit of a... Uh, uh, Mouse in the corner it would have been interesting to in this little group that we just saw down here where, uh, where the whole squad of Cyclones, of the uh, Harlan Cyclones was gathered around Coach Blatt. And uh, he was exhorting on his troops and I would just be wondering what he had to say in that little chit chat with that squad. Jamie Dominic into the wind, so the Rams are going to have the wind in the fourth quarter. The Cyclones will get the football, the Rams have a six to nothing lead. The southerly breeze. About 15 miles an hour. Deep threesome for the Cyclones. Kyle Murtaugh, Jamie Martin, Dominic Leinen. And here we go at the second half, quarterfinal round. 3A playoff action. Up into the air to the far side, about the 31 by oh. Leinen. 40, 50, and brought down at the Ram 46-yard line. The kicker, Davin Deck, and uh, Aaron Roth the bat. Power I set for Brett Gallagher and company. Gives it to the third man and Zach nothing Fox. there. Zach Fox blitzing in and uh, he dropped Dominic Linen a few years ago. Dwayne McGee, former Ramhead basketball coach, is uh, on the staff here in Harlan. There's a little counter play. Linen hitting the backfield. Kyle Miller and he'll go down. Got help from Erickson and others. Kyle Miller made the first hit. Most of it. Now third and very long. 
Gallagher wanting to dump the ball over the middle. He does. It's caught, but very short. Blair is hit down right away. And a by pop Mitch by Murphy. Mitch Murphy. And I'm telling you what, Blair heard the 13. Harlan is punting with the win. Again, you got your quarterback for the Cyclones uh, as your punter. A little extra threat there. Long count. Snap a bit low, but no ram rush. And he a terrible hits him punt. Sideline goes out of it. bounds. See shanked it here marked. to the near side. Officials yet to mark the football. We ram ball at about the 21st possession of the second half. They'll keep it on the ground to Scott Erickson, and he is hit down and won't go in. Very quickly. Split backs, Erickson slot right, Courtney Berry split right. And the Rams keep it on the ground to Watner, hitting the backfield, and he'll go down to the t back at the 20, a loss of two more. Some great backfield uh, penetration again. It was, as you would think, in the battle of field position. Wishbone set, which is a running set. And the Rams will keep it on the ground and get virtually nothing. Erickson got nothing, in fact, and fourth. And 13, the Rams uh, go. Erickson slot right. And uh, the Rams give it off up the middle. Uh, nothing there for Lautner. He keeps the legs driving and maybe gets two yards. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's been a, a good battle all night long. He gets is out of the tight end spot. Courtney Berry in split. And Briggs running option left to five. He's got the line of scrimmage, and that's it. On the floor is the wing right. Berry split left. The Rams uh, look to throw. Briggs is hit. He gets by one man. The flag, flag is down. down. Briggs has a first down. Two flags down. He's roughly greeted into the Rams sideline on the far side of the field at the 48. I think it was Brooke, the linebacker, and it's a hold on the Rams. So that'll nullify the first down. And uh, Joe, many times on those quarterback improv improvising, he left to the near uh, to the Rams sideline. And a draw play, and Lautner won't get much, and the Rams will put it away. Ball up the 28, so Matt for five. It'll be fourth and 17. 42. Dobbendeck was rough the last time back there. Tyler Caius, the snapper. Good They're snap. coming hard. He gets it away again. Jamie's kick is going to be fair caught at the 46 of JSPC by Kyle Merton. Har Gallinger and the Cyclones in the... Power eye, will fake the end off to Martin. Gallagher wants to throw deep, and a nice catch at the 33. No, incomplete, the official says on the near side. He rolled receiver field. And the uh, slot right is Linen. Rams show blitz and a reverse play to Linen. He tries to break it outside, can't do it. Stop to the Ram 46. Luke Ball was there, and uh, Zach Fox on the near side. Rams have an uncovered receiver right now. How they're getting over. And they're going to pitch the ball out. It is dropped. Incomplete, or is it a backward lateral? I think I they rule backward lateral to Martin. No, uh, by Gallagher. Once again, is Gallagher, the quarterback, breaks deep at his 15. And we're down to 4.55 to play in the third. And a punt away from Dustin. He gets a catch over his shoulder at the 7, goes to the far side, 10. And it now is knocked backwards. And it, uh, about the eight or nine yard SPC. Erickson is slot right. Very wide right. The I formation. Briggs will hand it off to Phi. And nothing uh, there. Maybe one. It's just very difficult goal. He's getting double coverage. Slot right. Erickson. A delay handoff. Phi breaks the first tackle. Breaks the second one. It's close first to the down. first down. Real close to the Munson in. Replacing the injured Sorensen. Rams have a first down give, and they give it up the middle and won't get any yards. We'll lose a little bit. In fact, uh, JSPC gave it to that win. They got one first down on this drive, which started on the Ram 9. They give it to the second man, Erickson. He's through to the 25. Third down and five for the uh, Rams and Scott Erickson. The five-yard pickup by uh, Scott Erickson. Swing right, split left. Third and five. Rams will want to throw. Briggs rolling. There's going to tuck it under and has the first down. Out to the 37. Bit the first down. Power eye set now. Give to the third man five. He tries to bounce it. He does move forward. Gets about two, maybe He's three. He's just pounded in there. <laughs> Seven. Again, the power eye set. And I'll give it to Erickson, and he won't get much. Get to the 40. About a yard up inside there, Doug. That's about it. That's about all there is. Right, power I set on third and six. This will determine whether the Rams have to punt into the wind or not. 
And uh, they will. Gain of about three on third and six, maybe only two yards. A great pressure on Jamie Daubendeck, and uh, uh, they've been close a couple times to getting one. He gets it away. The quarter is nearly over. The ball is taken on a sliding grab by Murtaugh at the 41 of Harlan. Seconds. You got to think they're going to test it, Doug. Wing right. Pitts to uh, Martin. Go. He wants to throw. Martin does throw. It is complete to Blair. First down out of bounds at the 46. Split to the left. Wing right. Shotgun. Shotgun for Gallinger. Looking over the middle. Complete to uh, Kirsch at the 32. Of JSPC, Zach Fox on the stop. Playoff quarterfinal action. Underdog JSPC 6. Number one rated, defending state champion Harlan Zero. Now this from the Real Country Championship Club. Brett Gallagher at the shotgun with Alonzo McNeese, the fullback, there to block. And the snap is to McNeese. It's worked once in the first half, not so here. One yard gain. Wasn't real crisply executed, Doug, and Scott Swaller. In the slot left. Only one back, Hester behind the quarterback. They fake the draw, here comes the rush. They get it away, complete to Blair. Down uh, to the 11, first and 10. Harlan through against the green. Tyler Caius on the this pass and attack and are moving the ball. 11 minutes to go in the game. Six to nothing Rams, they keep it on the ground to Martin to the nine, maybe thrown forward to the eight. About a three yard gain on first down. Luke Ball, flung in Cyclones. The second and seven from the eight. High set. They'll fake the counter. Gallagher on the keeper. He, uh, he pitches it late. Great pitch. Zach Fox drops the ball. Carry it. The six. That was Martin. Wing right. Shotgun. 9.49 to play. Gallagher from the shotgun. Throws it to the end zone. It's Bat deflected. It down. It's deflected. And Scott Martin. Swaller. Swaller got a hand on it. Fourth and five. Do the Cyclones bring the field goal unit? Plays on their feet. High set. Wanting to throw Gallagher to the end zone, incomplete! Drop. Incomplete behind line on the intended receiver. Held. Well, with the wind at their back, but JSPC is going to keep it on the ground here, I'm sure. Deep in their own territory. And oh, breaking out of there, Lautner 10, 15, Lautner 20, up the sideline, Lautner 30. And finally, Murtaugh drags him out of bounds at the 32. It's a 26, 27 yard run. And JSPC, a six nothing lead and out of uh, their own uh, end zone, Joe. A great block and a great back swing right, split left. Rams to keep it on the ground. And they'll give it up the middle and just uh, one yard uh, maybe to that time for Lautner. Just great penetration once again. Fourth down lineman jumps in there. I set. Second and ten. Briggs wants to throw. And he's got some running room. Tucks it under. A big hit at the 40. And out of bounds on the far side. Maybe the 39. It'll be third and short. Picks Justin up Briggs. seven yards. Third and four from the 39 of the Rams. 8.39 to go. In the game, fumble, fumble snap. Who's got the football? Still loose. I think Harlan might have it, Doug. That's Rams haven't turned it over tonight. Harlan lost it twice in the first Harlan half, and it. Harlan has it. A drop snap. Coming out of there with the football is Brian Schwartz. So maybe uh, that's the break Harlan's been looking for in Ram territory. The center and the quarterback and on the, the exchange. Ram defense call on again, leading 6 0. Draw play. And trying to get outside the line in. He's got some running room. 30 and drug out at the, no, he stays in somehow. And he's down the sideline and tripped up at the eight. Oh, man, how did Linus stand the flags on the play? I think we got a late hit, Doug, also on the Rams that time. I don't know how Linus stayed in bounds on the near sideline. He got down to about the eight yard line. Let's check out the flag. It is a personal foul against the Rams. 8.21 to go. Harlan's going to be about four yards away from the end zone and a first down to work with. Just so the game cracks at it from the Ram four. McNeese is the fullback. They'll fake it to him. The ball's dropped! And the uh, Rams may have it. We don't know yet. It's loose at the five. Rams say they have it. Oh, with this yes. be the Rams do have it! The Rams have the ball at the five. Third loss fumble of the night for Harlan. Straight handoff dive, Doug, and coming up off the bottom of the pile is Scott, Scott Erickson. Erickson. A lost fumble for Harlan. Will be playing the run, split packs. Riggs, uh, broken play, I think, is going to be ridden oh, down at about the one-yard line. Woo! Safety. Number Blair. 88. 
Yeah, 88 gross. Made the stop. That was a broken play, Joe. Briggs had nobody to hand it off to. Back at the one yard line. Rams were really lucky that time to uh, uh, avoid the uh, avoid the safety. It was number 88, Kyle Gross, and uh, these tackles from uh, uh, Harlan are just creating havoc on the field. Second and 14 from the Ram one. 7:35 to go in the game. Briggs will give it up up the middle, and boy, I, I don't there's, think there's any room. Yeah, they're going to give him about a half a yard, Doug, to Lautner. Uh, to Lautner. A half a yard is, is it. I don't even know about that. It'll be third down and 14 from the one. Maybe one and a half. We're going under seven minutes to play. If the Rams can uh, get any kind of field position to give Jamie Dobbindex some putting room, he will have the wind at his back. Third and 14 from the JSPC one. Too much time, Doug. Uh, Rams were real late getting that play in uh, from the sideline, and uh, they're going to be penalized half the distance to the goal line from the two back down to the one. Well, they're going to have one. I guess that's a place to have it. There's really nowhere to uh, really nowhere to penalize you. But the Rams just didn't hustle that play in and out, Doug. And the clock. Stuck on 650. And now it's it's late coming in again. But the Rams, they, they, they let Briggs uh, call the play in the huddle. Probably is something safe. And it is a give up the gut. And Lautner gets to about the seven. And that was a big five yards that Matt Lautner just picked up on his own because that's the five yards that they needed to give Jamie Dobbindeck a little more room to uh, properly execute the punt. Six yards to the seven for the uh, fourth and nine. Dobbindeck with a big punt here. 6.25 and counting to go in the game. Harlan will get great field position. The Rams just hope they get this punt out of there out of here and then at the other end of it you've got to have good coverage uh, uh, they've been low snap Dobby gets it away though and a pretty good kick Kirsch has it at the 38 he's got a wall 25 dropped down at the 20 by a neat guess for about a 20 yard uh, return Harlan is a great field position this whole half practically but no points now pitch to the far side to Martin. Hit in the backfield. Got by the first man. The second man crutches him. Snoof ball and then just cleaned up by Matt Lautner. And Lautner a little slow getting up. Uh, he is up at the 25. That's a loss of five for Mark to, uh, by Martin. <laughs> and second and 15, 541 to go. And they can end 15, five and a half minutes to go in the game. Shotgun. Gallagher looking, being rushed. He said he's down. A loss of five more. A great rush, and on the far side. They're going to play for half the yardage. Into the southerly wind, too. I set the reverse. On the reverse line into Martin. Rams have it. Ball is oh, it's going to be thrown, but incomplete. Ball had it snuffed out. Martin pulled up and passed to Kirsch. Incomplete. It's standing at his five. <laughs> Trying to pooch punt it, Brett Gallinger. Very little rush. The short kick flag is down in the secondary. Ball hits at the 10. Well, the Rams might have too many guys in the field. The five and down at the four. Now Harlan will have a decision if that's the case. Uh, they can they can keep the Rams down at the four yard line or they can move the ball forward. It is illegal, illegal per participation on part of, the, of JSPC. You saw the Rams, they just weren't comfortable. Dustin Briggs came on the field late and uh, the Rams just didn't change out. Uh, they, they just weren't on top of what the situation was. So it's a little five yard penalty and uh, you see if Harlan wants to kick it over again. Or do they go for it? Let's uh, see it marched still, off. Four and a half minutes to go in the game. It's been six nothing since 2.53 of the second when Scott Erickson ran six yards for a score. And the Ram defense has been nothing short of superb. The Ram offensive has very poor field position this entire half. And it's a 15 yard penalty, fourth and nine. And now Harlan will go for it. It's 50, I didn't realize that was a 15 yard penalty. Yeah, if, if you're trying to get the guy off, I think it's five. But they played the down with it. So at the 19, well, fourth and nine. Here they come. Uh, they're going for it now. And just a critical, critical mistake by the Rams. I'll see if the defense can come through once again. 
Fourth down and nine from the 19th. Harlan is Kierce wide on the near side. Tight end left. Gallagher rolling. And he gets the ball batted away and complete the Rams of hell. I didn't catch it. See what the Rams can do. Harlan has her timeouts left up the middle. A one yard gain is about it. Well, I think that Lautner. was Lautner about a one yard gain and moving a pile of about five yellow jerseys or red jerseys. Clayton Sorensen hasn't re entered the nose. Uh, have second and nine right here. Split backs, wing right. Wing left, rather. Pitch the ball to the left. And Fye cuts it back. And Fye gets a little bit of yardage to the 24. Third and about five. High set. 3.07 to play in the game. Third and five. Rams keep it on the ground and won't get the first down. They have to punt it yet again. Up the middle, playing it safe. And a 35 yard, or 20. Dominic to punt, 258 to go in the game. Harlan brings the rush. He gets it away. Good punt. And a good punt. Driving Kirsch back at the 40, or Murtaugh rather, trying to get in the corner. 45. Out of bounds at the 49, almost the 50. Erickson, or a rep, direct snap. Only one back in the backfield. And Gallagher rolls left. Big rush by Ball. They've got him. He's down. Big, huge sack. Oh, my. It's back to the 12-yard loss. 34-yard line. Luke Ball came untouched. They bring in the nickel package for defense. And uh, they didn't want to get stuck with another one of those 15-yard penalties uh, with too many men on the field and Harlan hustled back. This is where you've got to be alert. As soon as they saw that sack, the Harlan team was right back to the line of scrimmage, getting set up, ready to run the play. The Rams were out of position, out of sorts. I think it was Scott Erickson called the timeout. I know the Rams uh, coaching staff was not happy with that, but it was the right call at the right time to prevent that big 15-yard uh, penalty illegal participation. Second and 25 call. after the 15-yard sack. And uh, 2.22 to go in the football game. Harlan needs 25 yards in three plays just to have a chance. That's how well this Ram defense has played. The Ram defense has had their back to the wall the entire second half. They've been marvelous. Let's see if they can finish it off. Extra DBs are in there as Harlan is sure to throw. Gallinger from the shotgun set. Two receivers left. Two men with him in the backfield. Gallinger throws to the far side. And it is complete, Caught. but for Gallagher, straight drop back. Looking, looking, now he's in trouble. He wants to run, he gets by the first man, he goes down, Lautner got him. It'll be fourth and 23, no gain. And now Harlan, I think, will use a timeout. Fourth and 23 from the 37, and the upset is a very real possibility. 204 to play, back after this from the real. The uh, strong side, Doug, they're loading it up. Kirsch, Martin, and Linen. Shotgun formation for Gallagher, fourth and 23. He'll weave it down the field. It's hung up in the air. It is intercepted. Jonathan intercepted Minahan. Minahan at the 45 of the Rams. The Rams have the football. 157 to go. Fourth Harlan turnover of the night. The Rams have the ball. Harlan with only, I think, one timeout left. And uh, Joe Getch, the Rams are very close to the biggest win in JSPC history. Unbelievable, Doug. End of the game against Dennison, end of the game against Harlan. Who comes up at the intersection? Jonathan Minahan playing center field. Boy, here we go, Doug. A minute 57 left. I don't know if there's enough time for the Rams. Uh, they're going to force the last time out. And, uh, Just to give up the middle. And uh, that's Lautner for two, and Harlan will burn their final timeout. 151 to go in the game, second and eight. When we come back, Rams up six nothing. Now this from the Real Country Championship Club. JSPC, second and eight. Harlan out of timeouts, 151 to go. A first down would wrap it up for the Rams. Give up the middle, Lautner driving. He's got the first down. Oh, has it, he has it. He has That's the, the ball time. game. And that is Harlan, the ball game. Harlan 42 before being brought down. Matt Lautner has the run. Schwartz brought him down. It's at the Harlan 42. And JSPC is going to go to the Unidome, the semifinals. We don't know who they'll play. It'll be Saturday afternoon. Joe and I will be there. We're going to have a happy post game here because Harlan can't stop the clock. And uh, boy, oh boy, that's a, a big 10-yard run. Life is full of challenges. 
And I tell you what, here is a team that has met challenges. Uh, it's just, a, it's great. Clock running at 120. JSPC is going to do it. Briggs, I thought, might just take a knee. Lautner instead has it. He bounces it outside. Lautner, 30. Lautner, 20. Lautner out of bounds at the 13-yard line. That puts him over 100 yards. And the Rams win. They're going to win. 111 to go. The Rams are going to, for the first time in JSPC history, go to the state semifinals. They'll be 8-3. and three. Harlan will lose for the first time in 20 ball games. Oh, my goodness, Doug. And to do it on their home field in the quarterfinals on a beautiful night, shutting them out. A 30-yard run, 110 for Lautner on the night. Wow. I tell you what, of all of the things you would have thought, pulling the upset, I never thought the upset could have been with a shutout. I agree, and I see if Briggs just takes a knee. That's all he needs to do, he does. And the JSPC football team has done it again. They've won for the seventh uh, time in a row or eight and three and go to the uni dome in cedar falls here's defensive coordinator john turpin congratulations john. john what do you say oh my wow what a game <laughs> what a game is right and the rams have done great, great. Point. what do you say <laughs> <laughs> this is great <laughs> 40 seconds ago the ram fans are delirious the harlan fans are stunned briggs takes a knee again and uh, might have to do it one more time and uh, that is uh, Gonna be it if uh, Dustin has to take the knee once more. If you've ever seen a stunned crowd, I thought I saw the stunned crowd with Dennison a week ago, Doug, but on their home Look field. Look at this, a curtain call, Lautner comes out. What a player he's been. 15 seconds to go, Briggs will take a knee one more time. And that is it, JSPC six, Harlan nothing from Merrill Field, the biggest win in JSPC history. The celebration is on. The Rams are going to the dome. I'll tell you what, and give some credit where credit's due. You see these Harlan kids, classy, class act. I mean, in defeat if there's class, but these guys are good sports. They aren't out there crying and kicking and whatever. That's a classy group of kids. Final score, JSPC 6. Number one rated, two-time defending state champion Harlan 0 from Merrill Field in Ireland. The Rams have done it. We'll try to find out who else won in 3A and who the semifinal opponent might be. It'll be in the Unidome Saturday afternoon at either, I think, 1 or 1.30 or 4. We'll check that out later. We've got plenty to come on the post game. It's a huge Ram victory, 6 to nothing at Harlan. Now this from the Real Country Championship Club. Welcome back. Uh, arguably the biggest win and uh, certainly in JSPC history and uh, you might even go back Ram history that point can be debated but what a victory it was it sends the Rams to the Unidome against Central Lion uh, George Little Rock Saturday afternoon uh, November the 13th at 4.30 in the afternoon we certainly again thank our, our extra sponsors for uh, divvying up uh, coughing up uh, some money to allow these uh, playoff games to be uh, shown on uh, cable because there is an extra fee required by the Iowa High School Athletic Association to view playoff games. And those sponsors include the Home State Bank, M&M Appliques, Wiki Spreading, Fudge's Flower Shop and Green County Abstract Company, Royal Jewelers, People's Trust and Savings Bank, B and Herald Publishing Company, Lautner Farms, Dad's Landscaping, Dave Briggs, Proprietor, Jefferson Telephone Company, and uh, Brenton Bank. And again, we thank them uh, very much. Uh, congratulations again, Coach Kimmy. Uh, one more step along the way, and uh, you and the team realize one dream of playing a game in the Uni Dome. Yeah, it's it's uh, really exciting. I think we're going there. Uh, the ones that really need to be congratulated are the players who are just doing an outstanding job, and uh, John Turpin, who is who has uh, been running our defense all year long, and he sets the scheme and so forth. And then Mark Sawhill in line in the line coach and. Uh, Tom Powers in our secondary. They're the ones that are pulling this off, so they're the ones that really need the congratulations. They set it up, and then the kids just come through in flying colors. Well, uh, indeed, and Joe Gitch has seven straight wins now, an 8-3 record, and, and I would think the talk of uh, all the remaining playoff teams, uh, 20 teams left, uh, 
I don't know if there is a better story than JSPC in Iowa. It's got to be the best story in the state as far as playoff teams, and I'm sure the other 3A teams still alive are saying, who are these guys? I mean, coming back from one and three, this isn't supposed to happen. They just probably are saying, are these supermen or what's going on here? And that's the way you want to have it. Well, certainly not supermen, but uh, playing some great football right now and making the plays when they have to. Uh, kind of a familiar story uh, as it's been throughout the winning streak, Bill. Just enough offense, some great uh, defensive stands and plays. The special teams maybe didn't shine quite as well against Harlan in terms of great returns, but Harlan only kicked off once, and that was the opening kickoff. It went out of bounds. <laughs> a little hard to return that. Yes, uh, special teams, you know, they still uh, did their job, what they had to do. Jamie Dominic did an outstanding job of blocking, and, and we, were, we knew we were really going to get an uh, outstanding job of punting, and we knew that they were going to really put a big rush on us, and I thought the line did a great job. Tyler Kaius has just been doing a super job snapping the ball. Uh, so that was really a key to us last night. And uh, we had one breakdown on uh, punt return for them. But most of the time, our, our special team just did an outstanding job. And um, offensively, we, and we had a pass interception in there, too, which really sealed it uh, for us there at the end. So uh, again, everybody contributed. But again, we're relying mainly on that defense. And Joe Getch, the numbers of the game kind of reflect that, too. A defensive type of game, as does the score of 6-0. Well, it was really a struggle uh, for the Rams. Uh, 189 yards rushing, uh, 9 yards passing for 198 yards total offense. Uh, Harlan, 83 yards rushing, and this was a team that was averaging close to 350 yards a game rushing. 64 yards passing for 147 yards total offense. I think if there's a key statistic, and it's it especially evident in the Harlan numbers, their quarterback, Gallinger, I had him for a minus 40 yards rushing for the evening, and all of that was generated by that defense uh, with the sacks and the consistent pressure on that quarterback. And uh, uh, if there was one number that could sum up, I think, that ball game last night, it's that minus 40 yards rushing. Matt Lautner comes through with his second straight 100-yard rushing game in the playoffs. Third-rated uh, Dennis in Schleswig. He goes for 100. Number one rated defending state champion Harlan. They even top that, Joe. Well, and the Matt Lautner's 110 yards. There was a couple of, he broke three big ones, and the rest of them were just slug them out yards inside there. And we were commenting before uh, we started taping this, the quality of the interior line play of Dennison. There was a war on last night, and there was a war on between the Jefferson JSPC offensive line and the Harlan defensive line and it, it was just a slugfest battle and uh, it was classic football and for Matt Lautner to get 110 yards it's a credit to that offensive line doing that against just a, a, a fabulous opponent. Uh, Bill uh, you're down on that sideline all the time where we're up in the press box uh, can't always get the true feel of uh, the type of of uh, sportsmanship, the type of action, the type of hitting down on the field. What was that like against Harlan? Oh, it was very vicious uh, out there as far as the hitting. Sportsmanship I thought was great. I thought it was outstanding. Both teams, uh, you know, there's, both teams I thought were really class acts last night. And Harlan going out the way they did, why well, I can say nothing but good things about the way they acted. But the hitting was ferocious. And we, uh, we completed one pass, I think, last night. But we went out for tried to throw more and Dustin Briggs just put it away and ran and boy he took some big hits last night and he got up limping and uh, you know that's just the type of game it was it was just a hard hitting game and and everybody was getting smacked pretty good on both sides our tackles played so well uh, defensively our linebackers I just think Luke Ball is just coming into his own as just an outstanding great defensive end for us and and the defensive backs did a good job, too. So it's really hard to signal out anybody, but it was a very good, hard-hitting ball game. And uh, Harlan then ends its season. Their 19-game winning streak is over. They will not win a third straight state championship. They'll have to wait until at least the year 2000 to get their ninth. They've got eight state titles already. Uh, just the 37th loss in high school football for Harlan since 1972. 37 losses. That's just a little bit more than one uh, per year. But the Cyclone season is over for this year. And now, Bill, there's uh, another game to be played. Uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, you actually have what maybe uh, maybe one more day 
preparation here than you did uh, between the first and second rounds, but it's not much time. Is it? No, it's not. You just get four days in between these, and boy, that's tough, and that's hard to get a team right back up again, but it's the same for both teams. It's not any different than uh, uh, what they are faced with also. So we'll just take a light practice on uh, on uh, Tuesday night, and uh, we don't do a lot of hitting right now anyway. They're, we're just trying to get uh, get them to know what the opponents are going to be doing. We go through that, and uh, uh, so that's really all we're trying to do is make sure we have our formations. If there's anything we want to change, well, we'll do that, or defensively if we're going to make any changes. But we aren't going to do a lot of hitting, not this time of year. We're just trying to get healed up, and hopefully uh, they're rested and ready to go when Saturday gets there. Central Lion George Little Rock. Uh, I mentioned uh, I don't know of a lot of connections between uh, uh, the Lions and the Rams other than Greg Hoeing, one of your assistants, uh, was a George High School standout athlete. Uh, I imagine uh, Greg's pointing to this one. Oh, I think so, too. I think he'd love to go back, and you always love to go back and beat your old school. Uh, and he's gone up and watched him play. I know he has a lot of loyalties to them, as you would any any at your home school. And uh, he's gone up and seen him play several times the last few years, and this time he gets to see him on a different side of the field. <laughs> and Joe Gitch, uh, you've uh, done some early scouting already about the Lions of Central Lion, George Little Rock. Well, I had a good friend of mine uh, is from Spencer, Iowa, and he found out about the Rams score last night. He called me a quarter after eight this morning and just congratulated me because finally someone got Harlan because as their Spencer team er in the early 90s was defeated. And uh, uh, he was trying to give me some tips and notes and saying, hey, you got to look out for this or that or what have you. But uh, uh, he he didn't uh, I don't you got to play the game again. This is not an invincible team. Oh, but a uh, semifinal opponent who's been there before, a lot of playoff experience for Central Lion when they were just Central Lion Rock Rapids and now Central Lion George Little Rock, uh, both in 2A and now the last several years in 3A. So, uh, again, you find yourself in a similar role in, in that way, Bill. Everybody you play has more playoff experience. They've been there before and all of that. Uh, so that won't be any different. Yeah, it, you know, we're still battling that. I think uh, they were in the semifinals last year, I believe. And they've been there many times. It's been a strong football program up there. Uh, I remember years when they would beat a Spencer team like Joe was talking about, and you just didn't think that would ever happen because uh, Spencer just seemed invisible for a long time. But uh, they, they have beaten them, and uh, those guys and the Emmitsburgs really play great football in northwest Iowa. All right, the uh, Unidome game is at 4.30, Saturday the 13th. The uh, Rams seating is on the west side of the dome. The dome seats about 16,000, so you shouldn't have any trouble getting a seat. Uh, that should not be a problem. Uh, it's going to be uh, warm. It's been warm, but it'll be 72 degrees in the dome, Bill. It'll be artificial surface. There will be no wind. Uh, those are conditions that are basically ideal, and even though it's been great weather, it, it, ideal and on turf is something new to your team. Yeah, this will be entirely different for us. I know that the uh, Central Line has experienced it. We haven't, so, uh, you know, we'll just have to go up there, and and um, I'm sure most of these kids don't have the one pair of tennis shoes, so we won't be taking three or four pairs along, and I hope those that are out for wrestling have some tennis shoes and not just wrestling shoes so that uh, they can get up there and and, uh, you know, it'll just be an experiment for us. We don't know what to expect on that, and we'll just go up there and hope that uh, we've, we're wearing the right stuff and the heat doesn't get to us because I know that it's going to be a lot hotter in there than what we're used to outside. So you've probably got some old shoes some guys could use if it came down to it, huh? Yeah, some, uh, you know, some of those uh, red ball jets or something like that. I might uh, lend a pair if one of the kids needs a size 10. But uh, it, it, I'm looking forward to it, Doug. I mean, you and I have talked. This has been our dream, and we're finally going to get to do it, do a Ram game in the Dome. And uh, I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah, we all are. And uh, we've uh, cameraman Guy Richardson, the same thing. He's filmed other teams there. We've broadcast other teams there. Now it's uh, Coach Kibbe's staff and our own players against Central Lion George Little Rock in the 3A semifinals. Mount Pleasant will be playing against New Hampton in the other semifinal Saturday night. That will follow the JSPC and uh, Lions ball game so uh, the Harling game behind the Rams uh, it's certainly fair I think to call it the greatest win in JSPC history and one of the big wins in uh, county football history uh, six to nothing the Rams go on to the semifinals with seven straight wins uh, look forward to seeing a whole lot of uh, Ram fans at the dome Rick Moraine will be back he's been on to the East Coast 
when he gets back, fellas, make sure you tell him it was just another whole home day at the office, all right? <laughs> For uh, all of our special sponsors, cameraman Guy Richardson and Joe Getch and Bill Kimmy, this is Doug Reeder on the Ram Wrap-Up special playoff show.